Hello and welcome to Manoeuvres and Pet Preparation. Uh, let us see today how do we go about preparing for our English section in NPAT, right? When we see and when we talk about English uh, section particularly, we generally come across uh, things which are very much uh, uh, not unclear, you know, not very clear in our heads. Like say for example, we need to be clear with certain aspects of our NPAT examination. Like we, like we already know that English is such a section where we can score only if we are aware about certain logics right logics as in the logics which will help us in understanding all the parts of english in a better and easier way easier manner all right so we will be seeing in this video how do we actually come closer to getting our english section clear in uh, our npat examination for 2018 right we have certain our own uh, detailed syllabus that we have come up with where which we usually uh, come across in the, since the lapat examinations which will help us in understanding what kind of questions do we expect in our npat okay so the basic ones are synonyms and tonyms that is your opposites and meanings grammar the basic of grammar that is your applied grammar rather i would say it was it is your applied grammar where everything will be included including your verbs nouns paragraphs your um, paragraphs in the sense your short hand uh, sentences where there will be fill in the blanks where there will be words and everything that you can um, expect from general grammar rules right vocabulary that is your words your word knowledge the knowledge power of uh, uh, words and say, words and meaning especially which can be used in your npat examination during questions which are pertaining only to knowledge of words that is if you are having a good sense of vocabulary your this particular section is most scoreable it is easy to score here right spelling mistakes that is mostly your errors that you will come across and you can detect close test again fill in the blanks that is again the the blanks that you will be required to fill by selecting on the correct options we all know and the jumble paragraph section where we have parallel jumbles or uh, you know the options that will be given will be uh, jumbled up and down haywired and you will have to arrange it right arrange those paragraphs and then spotting errors again where we will be coming across uh, sentences or even words full of errors and you will have to detect those and you'll have to spot those sometimes you are expected to correct but most of the time you are only expected to spot them and choose them right sentence improvement there are incorrect ways and incorrect grammatical structure of sentences given you will be required to improve them and of course and last but not the least your reading comprehensions where mostly there'll be three passages asked you will be asked mostly five questions from each passage not more than that right and your reading comprehension part is a little complicated for everybody uh, people who are um, very much experienced and who have given the npat will understand that the reading comprehension part is something where people struggle the most so when you are talking about reading comprehension what you need to do is you need to understand what the passage is trying to tell you and we'll be uh, discussing in detail how to solve about how to go about for solving your reading comprehension parts uh, which will need your thorough brainstorming at times as well right so let us see this was our detailed uh, syllabus let us see how do we go about solving our and pat questions few of them from the last years uh, and pat paper are uh, over here uh, raman went to the park dash a stroll you are required to fill in your correct grammatical word over here these are the options we have a is than b is for c is to and d is in raman went to the park dash a stroll if we put the word than Raman went to the park than a stroll. Now, than a stroll, this particular than is usually used for comparison, like we all know, right? Comparison for if you use the word for, so for is to, you know, for is something that is he's doing it for, he is going there for. So, a stroll is already given over here. So, usually this is our option which we might use there, but let us not uh, complete it over here itself. Let us see the other options. The third option says to, and the last option says in. If you put the C option to over here, Raman went to the park to a stroll. To a stroll, he is not going to a stroll, he is not going towards a stroll, right? He is going for a stroll is always a correct answer like we all know he is going for why he is going to the park he is going for a stroll right and if you put the option in raman went to the park in a stroll 
in is something which we all know that it generally means inside of something right clear and simple english says in means inside of something now here there is nothing to be inside of something he is just going there for a stroll he is going by a walk going for a walk so let us say this is our correct option here will be your correct answer for right this is one type of question the other one is also similar which says this the ship sank dash the bottom of the sea is it at is it over is it to it is under now if we say uh, the ship sank at the bottom of the sea sounds which sounds precise and most correct uh, if we say the ship sank over the bottom of the sea now sank over there is no such word there is no such pairing which goes with sank over there is no such pairing which go, which goes with to also the ship sank to the bottom of the sea now when we say to the bottom of the sea sometimes you may feel that to the bottom of the sea is fine there is nothing incorrect in it but when we use the option at we are more correct and more closer with this particular option so we can always go about writing at compared to writing to had we not be having this option of at you can always go about writing to the ship sank to the bottom of the sea yes you would have been correct but here at is a more apt and more precise answer and what about the word under the ship sank under the bottom of the sea no under is completely ruled out because we do not say that ship sank under the bottom of the sea it is always at or to and the closer option is always at if you did not had i'm repeating if you did not had the option of at you can go about using to as your answer you won't be incorrect but since we have one option to select we'll definitely go with that now these kind of questions are generally very confusing that is why we have taken this particular question over here when there are two options which are more than correct which seems more than correct to you and you are supposed to choose the best one you have to go with your gut feel over there which is the best and correct and you know most precise option out of the two correct ones so you will be choosing it you will be using your brains wisely at that point of time and that is how you can go ahead with the answer so this kind of questions will be there will be little confusing also at times but you can always go ahead with it using your own knowledge your own uh, 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 like I said, your own gut feel and your own ideologies, correct? So these were some of the sentences. We have taken only two for this video now. And there are many more which we'll be solving when we uh, solve the next time. But for now, these are the two sentences by which you got the basic idea of what type of questions to expect in your English section of NPAT, right? Yes. So now, for improving your tool, for improving your uh, basic knowledge of English section, for improving the scores of your English section, there are certain tools which we have come up with. If you imply those tools, you will be easily able to get through this particular section. There will be no hindrance or blockages uh, at all coming your way if you go ahead with the ideas that we have formulated over here these are very basic ones and very easy to apply which most of us ignore so let us see what are those first one is reading newspaper you can start with the simple technique this is the simplest way of improving your english you can read your morning newspapers if not the entire one read your favorite section you can go to page three as well and read out uh, those uh, bollywood news or those uh, uh, you know celebrity news are always available in the page 3 section of any newspaper if you are interested in that particular thing or if you're a sports person you can open a sports page and read the particular that particular article about your favorite uh, uh, sport sportsman or sports person and this is how you can build up your interest in reading a newspaper if you are uh, not very much interested in reading so you can start with this part start reading it start doing something about the reading section here and then you can slowly gradually move towards the other interesting areas of uh, your own NPAT examination papers as well right so this is the first step then you can go about thinking about this particular section which says you have to avoid underestimation if you belong to any uh, non-english school uh, or school that is not convent or you are coming from uh, a vernacular section of the society or vernacular section of your school you do not need to underestimate your own powers you are still able to crack your NPAT equally easily just as those who come from the convent background you need not underestimate yourself you can do it and you should do it only by merely applying these techniques that we have over here we'll come across all of them slowly right but first of all you need to come out of your own mental blockage stop underestimating yourself this will go a long way in scoring good marks for any of the english sections okay then 
grammar rules now if you are aware of your grammar rules these are your basic grammar rules that is your verb what is verb what is noun what is pronoun what is adverb what is adjective what's a paragraph how to write an essay all these are your basic grammar rules that you will need to follow when you come across any solving any of the english exams right so if you are thorough with the first second and third tool definitely you will be easily able to go ahead giving the exam no matter how tough the paper might be then this one says apply your gut instincts whenever you see a sentence like how we did here we'll go back to the previous slide which which we are with when we had two options which were very close to and at so we were little bit confused which one to use so this kind of questions will uh, require you to apply your gut instinct right where you have very much much knowledge that you were correct with this particular section of grammar but yet you are little bit confused in your head at that time you can apply your gut instinct over here and go about writing the choosing the correct option at times you may feel that it might go wrong and it may go wrong and it would have been gone, gone wrong as well but yet your correct application of gut instincts will never let you down that particular mark can be scored in some other way if your gut instincts are strong enough if you are strong enough with the previous three parts of your tools right then comes the reading comprehension part which is a different uh, case altogether where you have to apply all these things that is fair enough but you also have to practice a lot because your uh, logic over here that practice makes a man perfect that is completely applicable in this particular section had you not compromised had you not uh, given enough of your uh, time and energy in reading comprehension then things would turn out difficult for you very obviously but if you go ahead practicing daily one passage one paragraph of your rc it won't be difficult for you that is a promise and tools like these will again help you over here as well okay so these are some of the tools we had developed and if you apply them nothing can go wrong with you your npat examination is going to be a cake walk that is our assurance provided you thoroughly go ahead with the tricks and techniques that we are helping you with okay so for your online exams if you are struggling still for your npat and you want to join us for our online programs and other programs you can always log on to our website www.menuwaregu.com contact us on these numbers 8828581455 8828 all right this is the particular uh, section where you can reach us out to also you can share and subscribe this to your npat aspirant friends who are planning to uh, opt for npat and help them out with our videos and our lectures you can click here in this box and also log on to our website like i said and this is the way how you can crack your npat very easily through maneuvers helps and techniques okay so all the best for your npat examinations for 2018 goodbye have a good day